risen Lord. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Good morning. We are so grateful to God for all of his many benefits, all of his many blessings. We are thankful. We are grateful. We magnify him. He's a wonderful, mighty, magnificent God. Amen. And we came to glorify his name this morning. Good morning. Good morning, man of God. How are you this morning? Praise the Lord. Good to see you this morning. Good to see you. I'm excited about Jesus. Uh, praise the Lord. I, I pray. Good morning, uh, Butler family. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm excited about the Lord. I know you're excited about the Lord and what God is doing in this season. Amen. Uh, it's a mighty miraculous thing. Uh, we just have to see it from God's vantage point. We have to see it from God's viewpoint. And uh, I believe once we see it, we'll see that all things are working together for the good of them that love God and who are called according to his purpose. Amen. So all things are working for his good this morning. Amen. I got just a little song in my heart. Amen. Uh, I hope you can sing it with me while you're at home this morning. I, I pray that you'll sing this little song with me this morning. Amen. I got a little song in my heart, and I'm going to ask you to sing this little old bitty song with me, if you don't mind. And the song is uh, Victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus. Amen. Victory in Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I just want to open up with a little bit of amen. Victory in Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm, I'm just looking at the current state of affairs and the situation, and I say, you know what? The victory is in him. So I'm going to sing one verse of that. Amen. If you at home, good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, amen. Good to see you out there this morning, sister. Just a little bit of this victory in Jesus first verse. Amen. You at home, help me sing it. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus. My Savior forever, he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me, oh, I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory. Beneath the cleansing flood. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. Glory to God. Glory to God. Listen. Amen. Let's go to God in a word of prayer. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer this morning. Amen. The uh, One of the my favorite scriptures comes out of the book of Proverbs and Verse 3, 5 through 6. Verse 3, 5 through 6. Proverbs chapter 3. Uh, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge God, and he shall acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. So we're just going to pray for just a few minutes. Amen. Let's pray, brothers and sisters. Lord, we come before you this morning, Lord, because we know that we can trust you with all of our hearts, Father. Lord, we come before you this morning, Lord, because we know that we don't have to lean to our own understanding right now, Father. That no matter what's going on in our world, no matter what's going on in our society, no matter what's going on in our homes, no matter what's going on in our lives, Father, we don't have to trust in ourselves. But we can trust in a God, O oh, Heavenly Father, who has the power to create something out of nothing. We can trust in a God who has the power to be able to speak life into existence. We have the trust, O Heavenly Father. We have the power to be able to trust in the God who can heal the sick and who can raise the dead, who can deliver broken men, who can set the captive free, who can set at liberty them that are 
bruised right now. Father, we have the power to call up on your mighty name and trust in a God who can do anything but fail right now, Lord. Lord, so we acknowledge you right now, Father God. Lord, we acknowledge you and we come before you, Lord, and we put our cares and our concerns and our pr prayers, our cries and our utterances on the throne room of God right now, Lord God. We put our petitions before you this morning, Lord Jesus. Lord, we give you our supplications right now, Father God. We call up on the name of the Lord this morning, Lord Jesus. Your word declares and decrees right now, Father. While you yet speaking, I will answer right now, Father God. Come in right now, Lord, and turn the situation around, God. Lord God, we pray right now, Father God, for our leaders in this nation right now, Father God, that you would give them wisdom right now, Lord God, that you would surround them with men and women right now, Father God, that will give them insight and intellectual understanding of things in their lives, Father God. But not only that, Father God, but you would also send spiritual wisdom around them, Lord, that they may receive of the things of the Lord right now, God. For the word declares that God holds the heart of the king in his hands, God. Lord, we know that you are the great I am that I am. You are the king of king and you are the Lord of lords. Lord, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not, God. So, Lord, as we pray to you this morning, God, as we call up on your mighty name this morning, Lord Jesus, we're asking you, O oh, Heavenly Father, to anoint, O oh, Heavenly Father, our leaders with some wisdom, wisdom from on high. Lord, not man-made wisdom, God, but wisdom from you this morning, Lord Jesus. Lord, we know, oh, Heavenly Father, that everything, oh, Heavenly Father, that you plan, everything you decide, everything that you do, all of your promises are yea and amen right now, Father God. Lord, we know that you gave, oh, Heavenly Father, the government its authority right now, Lord. So we're not coming, oh, Heavenly Father, against what you have already declared and decreed, Lord. But what we're doing, according to the book of 1 Timothy, we're praying for them in the name of Jesus right now, Lord God. That we might be able to live peaceable lives right now, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we pray right now, Father God, for the civil unrest in our society, Father God. For all of those who have racism in their heart right now, Father God. Lord, for it is an internal issue right now, Father God. It, we, it may show itself, it may reveal itself on the outside, Lord Jesus, but we need an inside tune-up, Lord. We need an inside clean-up, Lord. We need a, it's an inside job right now, God. And the only person who can fix it is the maker right now, Father God, because this is something that man cannot fix, Lord. If he could have fixed it, he'd have, we'd have fixed it a long time ago right now, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the walkers. We thank you for the protesters. We thank you for those who standing up for justice, Lord. We thank you for them right now, Lord. Lord, we ask your blessings and your grace and favor over them right now, Lord Jesus. But at the end of the day, Lord God, when we're in our own rooms, Lord, when we're in our own homes, when we're in our bedrooms, and at night when we land out with ourselves, Lord, we got to be honest when we look at the man in the mirror. And if the racism is in our heart right now, Father God, you're the only one who can fix it, Lord Jesus. You're the only one who can clean hearts right now, Lord. Come in right now, Lord, today because we need you to clean our our hearts right now, God. We need new hearts right now. We need right spirits right now, God. It's great that people are standing up. That's an excellent thing, Lord. We're glad that they're coming together, Lord, but at the Lord, we need you to give us the right heart. Change our minds, God. We need the mind of Christ. Lord, we need you right now, Lord. Lord, right now we pray for those who are fighting on the front lines with the COVID virus and victims, God. Those who have lost loved ones in the midst of this battle, Lord. Those who are sick right now, Father God. We are calling on the great physician. We are calling on the great healer. We are calling on the mighty God. The one who can deliver and heal the sick and the broken. The one who can turn lives around. The physician who doesn't need a surgical room. Who doesn't need a scalpel. Who doesn't need a prescription pad. The great physician who can speak and then healing will take place right now, God. Lord, we're not asking you to change your position. We're not asking you to move, Lord God. We're just asking you, O oh Heavenly Father, to look our way, Father. Just glance our way, Father. And we know that healing 
will take place. We know right now, Father God, that no matter what kind of uh, know what kind of, of, of medicine they come up with right now, Father God. We know that this stuff will have side effects right now, Lord. We know that no, no matter what type of antivirus they come up with, God, there's always something in it that can affect people the wrong way, God. So we need a God that can heal right now where there are no side effects whatsoever right now. Come in, Lord Jesus. We need you today, God, for the healing power of God. God, to move in a mighty way, God. Lord, we're asking and we're crying out to you, Lord. That's the reason why we've been fasting. That's the reason why we've been praying. Because we know that we serve a God who does the impossible. Move right now, Lord, in a mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, bless this word on this morning. Bless this time. Bless this message, Lord, that it might touch, heal, and deliver someone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the risen Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you this morning. Amen. Praise the risen Lord. We glorify God because he is the only one that's worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our praise. Amen. Glory to God. Good to see everybody out there this morning. Amen. I can't see everyone. Amen. But I just want to say that we are so excited that you tuned in this morning. We are so excited that you on with us. Amen. And we give glory to God because he has blessed you and allowed you to wake up and see a brand new day. So we thank the Lord for you. Amen. Glory to God. I'm just trying to say hello to some folk out there. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Minister Ford, Sister Donna. Amen. God bless you and a host of others that I see. Amen. We got to jump in this word. Uh, I see. Uh, amen. Praise the Lord. Sister Deborah, Sister Vera, Sister Sarah, Sister Howard. Amen. I'm sure my grandmother, Sister Olivia out there somewhere. God bless y'all. My wife is out there somewhere. Amen. God bless y'all. We're glad to see y'all. If you got your Bibles. Amen. Amen. Sister. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, if you have your script, if you have the word, turn with us to the book of Colossians chapter 2. We're going to look at verse 16 and 17 this morning. Uh, Colossians chapter 2, 16 and 17. Amen. And while you turn there, I'm going to go ahead and just get right on into this because I'm excited about it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Listen, the in this whole uh, verse, in these two verses right here, I just want to read them right quick before we, as you turn, I'm going to read them right quick for you and then you catch up because I'm going to read them again and then probably again. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible says in the book of Colossians chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, Paul now warns the church. He said, listen, don't let no man judge you in meat. Don't let nobody judge you, therefore, in meat or in your drink or in respect of a hot holy day or in a new moon, or on the Sabbath days. Listen to what he says next. He says, which are a shadow of things to come. They are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. So the writer now, he comes to the climax of his letter. He's been talking and talking, and he gets to this place. And the reason for his exhortation is to don't let nobody judge you, amen, for your meat. Don't let nobody judge you. Literally what he's saying, don't let nobody judge your walk, amen. Come on over here, church. We got to talk about this morning because a lot of, mm, we're going to, let's go over here. Paul is reminding them that they have been made free. You've been made free. I said you've been made free by the preeminence of Jesus Christ, by the blood of Jesus, because Jesus came in, shed his blood for you, shed his blood for me. You and I have been made free. And don't you let nobody come back and put you in bondage under legalism. You got to do this. You got to do no, 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 sir. No, ma'am. No ham. No turkey. Listen, it ain't a, listen, it, you got to eat this. You got to eat that. You got to do this on this holiday. And you got to celebrate that holiday. Oh, yeah. This going to help build your relationship with Jesus Christ. The devil is a liar, man. Jesus Christ came. He gave his blood on the cross. Jesus Christ, he came as the preeminent one. And he is superior over all those things. And so right here in this verse this morning. That's what we're going to be talking about this morning. I want to help unpack that for you. God bless you. I'm glad to see you if you're out there this morning. Listen, recall that one of Paul's methods of teaching or his method of being able to impart the word to us, brothers and sisters, one of the things that he used was warning. He used that whole warning system. He said, warning, sound the alarm, sound the alarm. And right now, what Paul is doing, he is sounding the alarm. For the rest of this chapter, he is going to sound the alarm so we don't allow anyone to put us back in the bondage of legalism. Man, God has set you free. You're not bound to that. Listen, Jesus 
Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. He, mm, ooh, Jesus, he sits on the throne in your life, and you are not bound to those legal things. Amen? You better hear what I'm trying to tell you this morning. So listen, so let no man judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day. And we're going to talk about that. The new moon, the Sabbath, and all. Why? It's just a shadow. It's just a shadow. But the body is of Christ. The body is of Christ. Let's talk about that. See, let me say, the word judge means, the word judge means that I'm going to impose my laws, my thoughts, my ideas, my views, my opinions up on you. Yeah, I'm going to force my stuff up, 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 over, up on you. Mm, I'm talking about we right here, man. Come on, talk to me this morning. Somebody ought to say amen. Have you ever had somebody trying to push their views, their laws, their, their legalism, their system, this ritual? We got to do it this way. Hey, this is the only way it can be done. We're going to force that down your throat. And what Paul's saying, don't you let them do that to you because you got liberty through Jesus Christ. You got to have liberty over their legalism. Man, you ain't going to push that stuff on me. Amen? Listen, y'all, from the onset of this chapter, from the start of this chapter. Brother Paul has stressed the completeness that we have in Jesus Christ. We have completeness in Jesus Christ. So we don't have no need to be under any man's legal system. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because we have completeness in Jesus Christ. So Paul here in verse 5, in verse 5, I'm going to show you how this thing started off. Even in verse 5, chapter 2, verse 5, he started off by encouraging them because they stood fast in the faith. In chapter, in verse 6, excuse me, verse 6, he adds another encouragement. He says, so now since you started off in faith, he said, and you are, have this much faith in Christ, won't you continue to walk in it, live in it, act like it, behave like it, keep on walking in the faith. Man, you're doing real, real good right now. You just keep on walking in the faith. That's what he's telling me in verse number uh, seven. He go on and he said, listen, you already been taught how to be rooted and built up and established in the faith. I'm preaching to somebody right now. I'm speaking to your heart. I'm speaking to your spirit. You've been taught how to be rooted and grounded in Christ. You've been taught how to be built up in him. You've been taught how to be established in him in the faith. You already know how to do this stuff. Don't let nobody put you back under no bondage system up no legalism. Man, tell me, you got to eat this. You got to do this. You got to have that, have that day and celebrate this day. No, 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 sir. That stuff is not even the real reality. It ain't nothing but a shadow. Don't you get suckered by the shadows. Do you understand me? Don't get taken in the shadows, brother and sister. He just brought you up out of the graveyard. Don't let nobody put you back in the graveyard. You alive now. Come on out of there, man. Listen, verse 9, he goes on. He reminds him that Christ is the fullness of God. And here's the thing about it. And they are filled with Christ. They are filled with Christ. In verse 10, he goes on. He said, you are complete. You complete. I mean, you perfect and you mature in him. Jesus Christ has done these things for you today, my brothers and sisters. And I'm on this feed today to let you know you are liberated. You are free, man. You got freedom in your life. Don't you let nobody put you back up under legalism. Just because it's their opinion, just because it's what they want to impose up on you, man. Listen, God said, I came that you might have life and you can have it more abundant. I don't want to keep take the shackles off my feet and let me dance, somebody. Man, come on here. Listen, the, not only that, in verse 11, he goes on and say, he circumcised us with a circumcision that wasn't even made by hand. You not even, you don't even have a circumcision that it was circumcision that was made without hand. No hands, baby. No hands circumcision. Why? Because he didn't want to just cut away your skin. He wanted to cut away your sin. So don't you let them guys put you back up under that bondage again. Do you understand what I'm saying this morning? You are free. If I don't say nothing else to you today, I want you to know you free. I want you to go from, away from this life live feed knowing that I'm liberated in Christ Jesus. You ain't going to put me under that bondage. Do you understand what I'm saying? You have to know this and walk in this because there are too many people with their narcissistic ways who want to try to convince you that you have to do a thing a certain way. You have to act a certain way. You have to do... Man, Jesus Christ is your Lord and if you are rooted and grounded in the faith with him, if you are settled and built up in him, you, he said, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the the flesh, but they walk after that spirit. Come on out of there, man. 
Mm, come on, somebody. Listen, in verse, verse 12, he said, listen, you've been buried with him in baptism. I said you've been buried with Jesus Christ in baptism. And here's the beauty of Jesus' baptism. The same way he got up, you got up. Now, you got resurrection power in your life. You have resurrection power in your life. And you're going to let these guys turn around and put you back up on the bun. They're going to put you back in the grave. You done came out the tomb. You ain't in there no more. Look, ain't the tomb is empty. That's what the angel said. It's empty. Ain't nobody in here. Go and then Jesus said, now go tell my brothers I am arisen. Listen, you need to tell them guys trying to keep you under that bondage, under that legalism. No, no, brother. I am arisen. I am li I ain't there no more. Okay? I'm free. Jesus made me free. That's what he did. So I'm not going back in bondage. Come on over here. Let me talk to you this morning. And the Bible goes on, he said, and he, verse 13, saying he had quickened you. He quickened you. What quickened mean? Quickened mean that he made you alive. Boom. There you go. You got life. You have life living in you. Listen, even Jesus says to, his, to those who believe him, I am the resurrection and the life. Though you die, yet shall you live. You have eternal life in you. Why would you let somebody put you back in bondage when you have eternal life residing in you, my brothers and sisters? Don't do that. You're going to let them put you back under that legalism and you got eternal life. Don't you ever do that. That's a bad thing. Don't ever let nobody put you under that money. Tell you, you can't eat this. This day right here, you got to celebrate this. No, 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 no. You don't get to judge my walk for me. I'm walking in Christ. And don't you ever let anybody tell you you got to do this and you got to go by these uh, rudiments and go by these standards and these religious rituals. Don't you let nobody tell you that, man, you free in Jesus Christ. Yes, you are. And I'm telling you that right now this morning. And if you don't know it, you need to, if somebody don't know it, you need to type out, out there and let them know you are free. Amen. You free. Amen. So listen, we're moving on. He nailed, a, he nailed a, uh, the law to the cross. In verse 14, in verse 15, he defeated all your enemies and all them charlatans that came up against you. Jesus Christ defeated your enemy. He put them to an open shame. Jesus said, look, look at his slip. His slip showing. Pull your slip up, fella. You already being ashamed. You exposed. Jesus exposed him. Hmm? Come on, somebody. Listen. And then he gets to verse 16. All of that has happened in your life. All that Jesus has done for you. Through all of those verses, he gets right here to verse 16, and he said, now you have liberty over legalism. Hmm? You got freedom over that bondage. You got life over that debt. Hmm? So allow me to be a little bit of rep repetitive in how we break down this verse. Let me be a little repetitive in how we break down this verse. So here's what he's saying. Let no man therefore judge you in meat. Why? Which is a shadow of things to come, but it's not. Uh, but it, but. The body is of Christ. And what he's saying, but it's not the body of Christ. Listen, don't let nobody judge you and drink. Just a shadow of things to come, but it's not the body of Christ. Listen, let no man judge you in holy day. Now, that word holy day is festival or holidays. It was the it was the rich it was the religious holy days that were festivals. It was their holidays. And we're gonna talk more about that here in just a few minutes. He said, but don't even let them judge you in that. Because it's just a shadow. It's not the body of Christ. Hmm? Then he's even in new moons and Sabbaths. In new moons and in Sabbaths. He said, don't let them judge you in that. Because they're just, they are just shadows. Amen. They are just shadows. It's just images. It's mirages. Listen, it's not real. It's not the real thing. Amen. The body is of Christ. Jesus. So here's my disclaimer for you this morning. I got to tell you that. So as we conclude going through this chapter, amen, I'm not saying we're going to finish it all day, but I'm saying as we wrap this chapter up, the law of Moses is just one of the teachings, one of the teachings in this church at Colossae. Amen. They also taught things like Eastern mysticism. They taught Jewish legalism. And we'll talk, maybe get a chance to talk a little bit about the difference between the two. Uh, they taught philosophy, and then they taught some forms of Christianity. So these guys, they had a church that was like a Baskin Robbins. You got 31 flavors, amen? And people have been doing this through all down throughout the years. This was just a hodgepodge of a whole bunch of different beliefs and all this stuff and these rules and then they put all the rules and regulations together and then they try to put them on your back and let me tell you what you do you take that thing off your back and say no sir i'm not packing that no i am not 
I'm not going to allow you to put that on me because I've been set free. Amen. Let's move on, brothers and sisters. So let me exposit this. I need to really just open up the text for just a minute because I want you to see what is going on here. Now, the meat and the drink was a way for the false teachers or the false prophets, those false teachers to come into the church and keep the people under the restrictions of dietary laws. Amen. This is Paul, so Paul is warning them in this letter that you must learn to defend your faith. Listen closely, because a lot of us don't know how to defend our faith when people start approaching us with things like this. Paul said, listen, let me help y'all with something. You got to learn how to defend your faith, man, against those who are teaching dietary restrictions. So I'm going to give you some things, and you got your pen, your pad, write this stuff down. Write this stuff down. I'm going to do a little apologetics right here, okay? You ready? Write this down. In the Old Testament, of course, God, he gave some dietary things in the garden. Genesis chapter 1. By the time we get to Genesis 6, amen, there's a dietary law in Genesis chapter 6, okay? Talks about that. We know uh, after the flood, came Noah comes. God said, okay, y'all can eat some meat and some meat and things like that. So God gives, he still, but he tells them what, then he goes and he tells them what type of meat. And then over in Leviticus chapter 11 and chapter 17, up under the spiritual or up under the ritualistic practices. Listen to what I'm saying. So those are your other verses. Read these chapters in your time. Up under Leviticus chapter 11 and Leviticus chapter 17, it gives you those dietary restrictions that God had implemented for his people. It was a, The system, however, was set up and designed because God was raising Israel up in their infancy. Uh, now I'm talking about under the under the legal system, but it was all but the under the legal system for Israel. God was raising them up in their infancy, and He wanted them to know that you are set apart, you are unique, you are different. Amen. So God instituted that uh, dietary law for their that legal system under the Mosaic law on, in Israel. Now, but the whole eating of the meat. The eating, drinking, and what your dietary restrictions were always about what's clean and unclean. What's clean and unclean. It was always about that. Amen? So when we come to the New Testament, we come to the New Testament, Brother Peter gets a visit in a place called Joppa. This tarp comes down. So the angel of the Lord, he come down, he tell, he say, Peter, and he got all these kind of animals and all these creeping things and all the snakes and all that stuff on this top. And he tell Brother Peter, he say, Peter, I want you to eat that. Eat this stuff. Peter said, oh, no, 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 never me. Ain't no, no unclean things that ever touch these lips. And he tells Peter something. He tells Peter, he says, Peter, don't call anything that I've created. And, and, and I'm going to give you, it's in Acts chapter 10, so you go read it for yourself. I'm paraphrasing. He tells Peter, he said, Peter, don't call anything that I've, I've created or made unclean. Amen. I, I, and so God was letting him know at that time, listen, I am doing, I've, I've done a new thing now because of the blood of Jesus was so efficacious. It was so powerful. What Jesus did at the cross was so powerful. And you being in him, it was so dynamic that it now gave you liberty. And so you cannot be under condemnation, even with those dietary restrictions. You cannot. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, you say to me and you you might say, well, Pastor, that was just revelation for him to go to the house of a Gentile. He wasn't really going. Okay, fine. Cool. So let's go here. Here's the thing. So if that is the case, when you what about when Paul, he in, when Paul himself cornered Brother Peter. So that's where you go. That's how you, you, you really do apologetics on this and you explain this so you can defend your faith. Because Paul, he meets Peter when they were over at Antioch. And Paul and Peter and the Gentiles were sitting down and they were eating meat together and they were having a good time. And then when some of the other Jews came and they caught Peter, way, they saw Peter. Peter saw them, they saw Peter, and Peter was sitting there eating with Jews. 
uh, eating with Gentiles, and then Peter tried to get up and distance himself. He tried to move himself. Paul went to him, and Paul rebuked him for that. Why did Paul rebuke him? Because uh, not only did he eat what the Gentiles were eating, he was eating with the Gentiles. Now, according to the Jews, that was supposed to be an unclean thing. Yes, it was. It was supposed to be an unclean thing. But Paul confronted him to the face about it and about Peter's behavior. You know why? Because Peter's behavior was disingenuous. Hmm? And as long as it is, as long as it is just us sitting here eating and together, then I'm glad to feed my pie hole. Oh yeah, man. Give me some more of them ham hocks. Give me some more of that pork chop. Give me some more of that bacon. Oh, you good as long as it's just us sitting here. But once you saw them other guys come over here, now you're going to jump up and act like you're not with us. No, that's just, that's disingenuous. That's the biggest form of bigotry right there. That's what, mm, ooh, I ain't mean to go there, but I'm telling you, you want to see, that's the thing right there that really gets you. If you are who you are, just be who you are. But don't come over here and sit with us, act like you with us, and then on the, and then when your buddies, your friends, your cohorts, those who are like you come around, then you act like you don't fool with us, you ain't got nothing to do with us. Somebody out there know what I'm talking about. That's disingenuous. But as long as they, you was good sitting here eating with us. Mm -hmm. You were fellowship, fellowshipping with us as long as those Judaizers, those who were keeping you under that legal law, you were good as long as they weren't around. But when they came around, you act like you ain't got nothing to do with us no more. Yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm glad that Jesus said, Jesus had to tell him, it's not that which goeth into the man that def into the mouth that defileth the man, but that which cometh out of the man. That's what defiles a man. But to sit around here and eat because your hands ain't clean and you ain't, that don't defile you. No, 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 sir, no, ma'am. Listen, what's messing you up is the stuff that's coming out of you. That's the stuff that's down in your heart. Yeah, that's where you do them apologetics at, man. Let's get down to this sin issue. Because I bet if you ain't, listen, if you like me and I'm like, if you like me and I'm like you, if you ain't dealt with that issue of bigotry, if you ain't dealt with that issue of being disingenuous, if you ain't dealt with that issue of hatred, if you ain't dealt with that issue of animosity, if you ain't dealt with that, man, come on here. It's some stuff down in you need to be there. And it ain't the food that's making you unclean. It's some behavioral problems that's making you unclean. You can't love your husband and you can't treat your wife right. Come on, somebody. Oh, you ain't got to say, man, it's okay. Because I don't want nobody to say nothing. I want nobody to look at you wrong. Because Pastor Woods, I'm putting it out here for you, amen. And you ain't got to worry about it. Because, uh, listen, I'm going to tell the word of God. I don't care what happened. I'm going to preach this gospel. And we have to be changed. We have to be transformed to be able to live a life to, to the place where we can live in liberty. We have to be transformed to live in liberty. Otherwise, we're going to get stuck in the same thing that everybody else in the society is doing. We're going to get stuck in the same. We're going to go along with the crowd. We just don't go along so we can get along. But the devil is a liar, man. You have been created to be unique. You have been created to be different. You have been created to be separated. You have been created to be set apart. You you ain't like them, so quit trying to be like them. Mm-hmm. You free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound, no more chains holding me. You better get free, man. You better get free. Listen here, we got we moving on. Praise the risen Lord. Listen. So Peter going to withdraw himself, but, but the, and he opened. So when Peter withdrew himself, what upset Paul most? Was that what you just did, brother? What you did just did. Y'all listen to me this morning, cause I'm. This is powerful. This is real, real, real life, practical application stuff. When you separate yourself like that, what you have just done is you have disgraced the gospel. You know why you just disgraced the gospel? Because you left an opportunity, a potential for evil to be able to come in. You just opened the door to Satan. That's what that disingenuousness does, man. It opens to say that bigotry, that hatred. When you want to separate us, because we eat this, we look like this, we smell like that, all that stuff. Man, that's disingenuous. You ain't real. You just trying to front. Mm. Y'all mm, know what call it front. That's what they call it, amen. But the, and it, what it does is it hinders the gospel now. Well, we were able to sit down with these Gentiles, Paul said. We were able to sit down, eat with them, fellowship with them. They were opening up. They were sharing their lives. We acted as counselors in their life. We was telling them about their marriage. We was telling them, being able to share with them about their marriage. They were sharing with us about their family life. They had begun to share with us about 
not only their family life, their homes. They opened doors of their homes to us. They were feed. They were ready to feed us, man. They were ready to break us. You hear me? When they made money, they would make sure we had some in our pocket too. That's how deep the relationship went. But then when you draw back like you drew back just now, what they did was they put us out in a position now to where you have just you would have just hindered the work of the gospel. You stopped what was going on in the ministry. The spirit couldn't flow freely because... Mm, and we got to come, man. We got to come to this place where we can continue to walk in liberty no matter what. I don't care if you like it or you don't like it. I'm still going to walk in liberty because Jesus made me free. I'm free in the Lord. And it's just some people, they so tied up in these old religious systems, they just not going to come out. Listen, that's not your problem. Come on, somebody. Lord, have mercy. So he go on, he says, so, so don't let nobody judge you. I got to give you this. Woo. Don't let nobody judge you for holiday. The word holy day is really a holiday. It's a festival. And they had three, there were three types of festivals that's spoken of in this verse. I got to run on to my end. But I want you to understand it was three types of festivals that were spoken of in this verse 16. He said the holy day. Now the holy day was, was the annual Jewish festival. So every year, okay, they had three of them. Passover, Pentecost, and then they had the... Uh, the uh, Festival of Boots, and you have to, we studied that, but Festival of Boots is, is a festival for God's harvest coming in. So they celebrated the harvest of God. Annually, they had three, three major, let me say that, three major festivals every year. It was the Festival of Passover, the Festival of uh, 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 Pentecost, and then the last one was the Festival of Boots. And where we celebrated the Lord for the harvest coming in, all the people get together and celebrate the harvest, right? And then, so he's saying, don't let them judge you when it comes to annual festivals and days. What was what's significant about that is that every year, three times a year, you had to go back to the temple. You had to go back to the tabernacle. You had to go back to the place where God was. And, and this is beautiful because it praised God. It celebrated God. It worshiped God. We offered God sacrifices. We gave God the best of what we had. We gave God the first of our fruit. We thank God for the Passover lamb and all those things. But man, when Jesus Christ came along, Jesus said, listen, I'll be your Passover. When Jesus Christ came over, he said, no. Nah, I sent you Pentecost. 50 days later, you got the Holy Spirit, so now I'm living on the inside of you. Not only that, man. Come on over here, brothers and sisters. Jesus said, no, no. You ain't got to go to the tabernacle. I'll come to you, and I'll live inside of your heart. So when you're talking about putting up a booth, no, that's not the tent over there. You the tent right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's why he said, don't let them put you in judgment on that, because you got Christ is in you. Amen. The hope of glory. Uh, come on, somebody. Then he, then he talked about, not only that, he said this new moon. Now, new moon, new moon is a, a monthly, a monthly feast, a monthly celebration. Every month, new moon come in, they'll celebrate life going on, progressing, and then they will light the fires at the tops of mountains so everybody could see that there was a new moon coming in. There was a new month coming in. They, but, the, but here's the thing, and then they would blow the trumpet, and the trumpet sounding, you and I both know, the trumpet sounding was that it was normally a new reign, a sovereign lord, a king or something was coming in when they start blowing them trumpets, amen. That's just one of the things they blew the trumpet for. And well, another thing they blew the trumpet for was victory, amen. Mm, lord, I'm preaching to somebody right now. And he said, listen, don't even worry about that new moon, because guess what? Jesus is your next month. Jesus is your next day. Jesus is your next minute. Jesus Jesus is your next hour. You have life in him. And you have, mm -hmm. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Jesus is your king. Jesus is your Lord. That's right. That's right. Jesus is the one that delivered you. So you better come on out of that graveyard and get on over here and start living this best life in Jesus Christ. Mm. Yes, sir. Listen, then last one, he said that Sabbath. Now, the Sabbath day was the day when they were supposed to rest. Remember that? They were supposed to rest. It was some day they were supposed to rest. We, of course, they went and started worshiping and doing all these things, but it was a day that God set aside to rest. 
from his labor. And then he gave it to them. He said, now y'all rest. Don't do nothing. Sit down. Of course, you know, just like them, just like us, we still going to do what we want to do. But then I thank God that one day, in the, according to the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, you're going to have to go read it for yourself. Hebrews, chapter 4. We got another rest. Amen. We, he brought, and then Israel, when they finally got to their rest, it was in the promised land. But we got another promised land. Uh, we got a rest. His name is Jesus Christ. And that's why Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I'm just paraphrasing. Amen. And he said, take my yoke up on you and land on me, for my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. And you're going to find some rest for your soul. Boy, I'm going to put you to Ray, you understand? Jesus said, I will let them put you to bed, boy. You don't understand what I'm trying to tell you this morning. There is some real rest in Jesus Christ. It's rest from your frustrations, rest from your problems, rest from your anger, rest from your tears, rest from your worries, rest from your heartache, rest from your hardship, rest from difficult times, rest in times when you just can't see no way out. There's still some rest in Jesus Christ. Jesus said, come on over here and rest in me. Rest when people ain't getting along with you. Rest when you're by yourself. Rest when you're having trouble. Rest in times of heartache. Rest in times of hurting. Rest when grief is... Help me up in here, Holy Ghost. Jesus said, I'll be your rest. I'll walk, mm -hmm. I'll walk you through every turmoil, every situation, every problem you got. Jesus is walking with us, and he is our rest. Listen, the point of his, this whole thing about liberty and over, over legalism, man, here's the point. The problem with us as humans is that we always want to, we, we thrive on God, God Almighty, we thrive on religious duties. I said we thrive on religious duties. See, y'all, see, tradition and ritualistic formulas, man, are accepted in our times more than ever in our society. We accept the religion. We accept the formulas. We accept the rituals. I'm good with that, okay? But because what they do is they help us to gauge. I am teaching this morning. Help me up in the Holy Ghost. The Lord is really ministering right now today because what these rituals, Religions, religions help us do, what these rituals help us do, what these formulas help us do, is these things help us to be able to gauge our spiritual barometer. I wish somebody was listening right now. These things help us gauge our spiritual barometer. Ah, it helps us be able to be able to put a number to calculate. This is how spiritual I am. This is how much I serve the Lord. This is how much I go to church. And ain't nothing wrong with going to church. Don't get me wrong when I say that. But the problem the problem is, brothers and sisters, I said it before and I said it again. Don't be running down there doing church doing church work when you won't do the work of the church. Man, you better come on up here, somebody. Listen, I'm telling you right now, and what makes it so difficult to do the work of the church is because it is extreme. What makes it difficult is because it requires for us to be able to beat our body, to bring your flesh under subjection. Now, I ain't talking about going to church. I ain't talking about church work. I'm talking about the work of the church. When you're talking about doing the work of the church, man, it's more than just sitting in a building somewhere. You understand what I'm saying? Saying, this church work thing talking about I got to go check on my neighbors. I got to go down the street and pray for somebody. I need to call somebody. I need to keep, I need to stay in prayer for my nation, for my leaders, for those who are civilly unrest, who have been unfairly treated, who those who are unjust. I need to be in prayer. I need to be fasting. I need to put some, you understand what I'm saying? This thing, this ain't just church work, man. This is when you start doing the work of the church. It is the body of Christ, and that body requires some suffering. I got to crucify my flesh. Oh, I got to deny myself. I got to take up my cross and follow him daily. That's a whole nother ball game right there. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's the reason why this week we call for a three-day fast, amen, so we can start getting back to being, doing the, doing the work of the church and the church is called to be able to make a difference, to resolve the thing, man. The way we fix our fights, the way we fit, mm, it's a fixed fight. But the way we get our victory is on our knees. I'm not saying ain't nothing wrong with protesting. Ain't nothing wrong with walking, amen. But after you do that, who gonna fix the problem? It's still an internal problem. It's still an inside job. Okay, it's great that you, amen, God bless you. We love you. Good job. Amen. But at, at the end of the day, are you calling out to God to turn this thing around? He has to fix the heart of broken men and women. And only God can do that. Amen. So, church, I'm telling you this morning. All of this stuff ain't nothing but a shadow. It's just a shadow. The reality is Jesus Christ. I got to go, but I'm going to tell you right now. 
So I'm trying to figure out why are we running over here trying to hug the shadow. You know what I'm saying. You trying to embrace the shadow when you holding the reality by your by his hand. When the reality is in you, he living and dwelling on the inside of you. Man, quit running after these shadows and embrace Jesus Christ. The Lord is going to fix this thing. He promised it in his word. He ain't never told a lie. He ain't never wrong. You can trust him and believe him for everything. You better praise the Lord and give him glory, church. church. Get on your knees and start calling out to the Lord. I promise you, God will fix it. Bless the Lord. Listen, I got to go. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you right now for your rich word, Lord. We thank you right now, Father, for helping us to understand that we have been called to be liberated. We've been called to be free. We've been called to be redeemed. We've been called to be pulled out. We've been called to be separated, God. And ain't nobody like our God. He sits high in the heavens and he looks low. Father, that's the reason why. We call on your mighty name. Lord God, we pray right now, Father, for those in our nation who are sick and afflicted. We pray, Father, for those in our nation, Lord, who are suffering under unjust oppression. We pray, Father, for those in our nations that have any office of leadership. Lord, that you might give them the wisdom of God so that they may lead right now, Father God, in a spirit of excellence, doing what is in the best interest of the Heavenly Father of God and of the people, Lord. Lord, we realize right now, Father, that we have the right to be able to stand up and call injustice, injustice, Lord. But more than anything, we have the responsibility to call on the name of the Lord. One is a right. One is a responsibility. And Lord, we want to take full advantage of the right and the responsibility. To call it what it is. To pray against it. To speak out against it. No, we're not in agreement with it, Lord. We know it's wrong. But we're calling on you. Because we know you can fix it. Have your way today, Lord. I pray for everybody on this live feed. That you'll give them the peace of knowing. Listen, I'm liberated in Christ. I'm not under condemnation, and I'm not going to feel bad, and nobody's going to judge me in, in my walk with the Lord. Amen. Father, I thank you right now, in Jesus' name, for this rich, wonderful fellowship. Have your way today, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord, saints. I'm excited about this word today. I'm excited about being free in Jesus Christ. I'm not going to go back to that bondage. I pray you don't go back to that bondage. And so I'm talking to those right now who might still be in bondage because you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Yeah, man, Satan just still got the handcuffs on you. And I'm not saying this to be funny, but I'm telling you the truth right now. This is the truth. If you think that man was standing on George Floyd neck, you don't see in the spirit what Satan is doing to you. Oh, he rat man, you doing, you getting done 10 times worse than him. Because Satan, for those who don't believe, who those who are not born again, Satan is setting you up for an eternal damnation. Amen. He tricking you. He fooling you. He got, he putting the wool over on your eyes. Amen. So I'm telling you right now, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and say, man, that enemy have got you bamboozled. He really got you fooled. You in a worse condition than the brother was. Amen. That's the truth of the gospel right there. You in bad shape. And I'm going to tell you, anybody that's not with him, Jesus said, if you're not for me, then you against me. And when God come back, when his wrath, anybody that's not with him, God going to execute judgment on all of those. Now, because he's the king. He's sitting on the throne. He has the right to judge. He's going to execute judgment on all of those who have not named Jesus Christ the Lord of Lords. I'm just telling you the truth. You get that Bible, you read it. Read through that book of John. Man, he telling you right there. Listen, those who don't believe, they condemned already. So let me help you out today. Come on over and let me tell you something. Listen, all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And when I say all y'all, I mean all, brother. I don't know who you are. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. But listen, man, I know because I've been out there. I've been in the world. I've lived doing whatever I wanted to do. And I didn't even know I was a dead man walking. 
He said, all have sinned. So we all did it. Everybody on this feed have sinned and we have come short. That word short mean I missed the mark. Ah, dog, I missed it. Yeah, man, you missed it. I missed it too before I missed it, before I came to know Jesus. We all missed that mark. We were trying to get somehow work our way up to God through these legal systems as if we were going to be able to earn favor with God just because what we did. And we did it too. Yeah, I'm just telling you the truth. But then here's the problem. The problem with what we were doing, brothers and sisters, is that the Bible said that the wages of sin is death. Now, I'd have been fine. I'd have been okay until he put that stipulation in the claw. He said the wages of sin is death. What wages mean is the payment. But God said, because you have sinned against me, you have violated my holiness. You done crossed the line with me. I ain't talking about a miracle. I ain't talking about black folk, I ain't talking about white folk, I ain't talking about Mexican folk, I ain't talking about no particular person. I'm saying people, period, sinners cross the line. Jew or Gentile, I don't care what color you are, it's Jew or Gentile, he said, you crossed the line with me. That's what God said. He's saying, God said, because you crossed that line, here's what's going to happen, man. The wages of sin is death. And I'm talking about a real death. I ain't talking about this, go get me a casket and a grave somewhere. No, 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 no. He talking about the real death. This real death I'm talking about, this is a death of eternal torment. This is a death where you're going to spend eternity in the lake of fire with Satan, hell, the devil, and the, angel, and the, and the fallen angels. Amen. He talking about a death where you're going to be constantly in torment, teeth gnashing. He talking about a death where worm will not die. Man, this thing is real. And God say, I'm not playing. You don't want me right now. You wait. Because I'm going to heat it up in your life if you don't choose Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And here's what he's saying. I'm not going to do it for a day. That's scripture. I'm not going to do it for a month festival. This ain't going to be for a year. I'm, I'm executing eternal judgment. The penalty is eternal. Not just life. Eternal life. You understand me? That's a whole different ball game. So here's what I want to encourage you to do. Because we are in such desperate, dire need, man, I want to get you out of that place of bondage. Come on over here and get this freedom, get this liberty. God said, I'm going to give you a gift. I'm a judge, I'm, I, I, and my job is to judge. I'll always be a judge because I'm God, so I can't change. But I'm going to give you some, a chance. I'm going to give you an opportunity. You got a chance today. Pastor, how I get the chance? Talk to me then. Okay, here's, I'm going to tell you. Here's what happens. He said, but the gift of God, the gift, a gift means something I'm going to give you. I'm offering it to you. I'm granting it to you. You didn't earn it. You don't deserve it. You didn't even work for it. And truth of matter is, come on, let's be real now. You don't even have the money to pay for it. True, right? Some of us ain't got no money. We broke right now. Amen. That's just the reality of it all. So you sure can't pay for it. So he said, right, listen to what he said. He said, but the gift of God is eternal life. I'm going to give you eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm giving it to you. I am giving it to you. I'm giving it to you. It's yours. Here you go. You want it? I'm offering it to you today. Pastor, okay, well, I want to take it. Let me tell you how to get it. In the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay? Whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That word believe right there means that I have my confidence, my trust, my faith, my reliance, my dependence upon him. His son, Jesus Christ, and what he did at that cross over 2,000 years ago, amen. When he hung, bled, and died there, I believe in that. I believe that he took my place. He was my substitutionary atonement. He died for me. He died to set me free. He be, When I, he was buried, I was buried with him. I went in him with him in my baptism. I was buried with him. When he rose again, I got up again, and I believe that. So, Lord, I believe in your son. I believe you sent him. I believe he gave his life for me. Can I have the eternal life? Lord, I say, here you go. You shall have eternal life. It's yours. Amen. Believe that. Receive that today, my brothers and sisters. Don't go off of this live feed until you do that. Amen. Make sure when you go in your quiet time, fall on your knees and you ask the Lord Jesus, the Lord be my Lord and Savior, because I do not want to suffer the second death and be in the lake of fire with Satan, death, hell, and the grave and the fallen angels. I want to be with you, Lord. I want eternity with you. I want no, where there's no more tear, tears, no more crying, no more pain, no more suffering. Lord, I want to be with you, God. And brothers and sisters, I believe, I'm a believer, that if you accept him right now, he'll be your Lord and Savior. He'll lead you and he'll liberate you. Amen. Be free. Listen, God bless y'all. Today we're uh, 5 o'clock. 
We're coming out of prayer at 5 o'clock. Amen. I pray that your prayer time, your fasting time with us has been a true blessing. Amen. I pray that during the fast, God has really revealed some, some mysteries and some secrets. He has given you peace and comfort and love. I pray that your fast time has been extremely powerful in the Holy Ghost. Amen. But at 5 o'clock, we're going to be coming out of our prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord. We just give glory and honor to God. Amen. And normally, uh, praise the Lord. We are going to schedule, amen, we're going to schedule a Zoom prayer. We want to get this thing together. We're going to schedule a Zoom prayer, amen, so we can continue to pray, amen. Uh, we had one on last Sunday. Uh, if you want to take advantage of that, you know, please write it down in the comments. Write it down in the comments. Say, Pastor, hey, I want to be a part of the Zoom prayer, amen. Let us know. We want to know how you feel about it. We want to know if you want to come in, be a part of this community as we pray together. Put it down now. Yeah, Pastor, put your finger up. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. Just, just let me know when. Let me know where. And we'll set this thing up, and we're going to continue to pray. Amen? Listen, God is putting a lot of things, amen, on our hearts during this prayer time. Uh, he's given me a lot of revelation. He's given me a lot of wisdom on some things. And I want to share those things with you. Amen. And when the Lord release us out of all of this, I'm writing it down. I'm jotting it down. I'm praying about it. When the Lord release us from it, I want to share these things with you as well. Amen. Listen, God bless y'all family. Love y'all so much. Thank y'all for tuning in with us this morning. Amen. Listen, as always, you better go with God because God has always gone with you. And I'm out.